Greetings, I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the, in the world. And we have another one of our exciting Black Buddhist lectures for you today. Now please understand that we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association present to you Black Buddhist lectures. We are like a black radio station. It means that we are cultural, not racial. So when we speak, we speak in the dialect of our black culture. Now, there's a lot that's going on here. You see, there's culture, there's history, and there is language. My lecture today is Mahayana Buddhism, the plan erasure of black Buddhist history. Alexander the Great tried to conquer India and he ran up against the Nandas. Well, Alexander, you know, with the Nandas, they had 80,000 elephants and, and Alexander the Great said, hell no, I'm not going to try to conquer these black folk in India. But what happened was, there was another group of black, black bad people, they were called the Muriams, and the Muriams actually controlled India up into the time of 185 BC when Push Yavitra Sangha killed the last uh, Muriam king, Brihadatta. Br Br he killed him in broad daylight and they set up a Brahmin cult. This is 185 BC and all of the black Buddhists ran to their brothers in Nubia. See, it was, it was the father of history who wrote us who wrote that Muro was the cradle of the Jim the Sophist because the black people went to Muro, which was the land of Nubia. Now in India, they killed all the Buddhists. Now, they set up this caste system, or they were trying to set up the caste system, and they brought in a white person. Now the white person they brought in, this is about 1900 years ago, they call it the Shaka era. Shaka means in, in Sanskrit foreigner. They brought in a foreigner and his name was King Kanishka. King Kanishka came in. This is about 1900 years ago. They call it the Shaka era. Shaka means in, in Sanskrit foreigner. They brought in a foreigner and his name was King Kanishka. King Kanishka came in and with his soldiers, he was from the he was from the Afghanistan or the Kushan dynasty. They set up a dynasty, and the Kushans they were practicing. They were they got introduced to Buddhism through a former Brahmin by the name of Ashvagosha. So we can get a clear understanding of Buddhism. It is very important that you get a black perspective, so we can get deeper get a deeper understanding of Buddhism, inclusive of black culture and history. The Japanese sets are not going to give you a teaching inclusive of black history, culture, and language. Now, we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association teach that Mahayana Buddhism is the time when Buddhism became separated by race, culture and language and we're going to give some facts to back this up. To understand how Buddhism got separated, let us look at the history of Mahayana Buddhism from the writings of Nichiren Shonen. Now, Nichiren Shonen writes in the Ghost Show, it's called On Curing Karmic Diseases. It says, quote, Bodhisattva Ashvagosha a native of Eastern India was 13th among the successors of the Buddhist, Buddhist teachings. At one time, Ashvagosha had been a leader of Brahmanism. When he debated with the Buddhist monk, Kuyayasha, over the validity of their respective teachings, however, he quickly realized the superiority of Buddhist teachings. Ashvagosha was prepared to behead 
himself in order to pay for his past offense, saying, quote, I have been my own worst enemy, leading myself to hell, unquote. But who Yah Yasha admonished him, saying, quote, Afagosha, do not behead yourself. Use that head and mouth to praise Mahayana. Afagosha soon thereafter wrote, it's called the awakening of faith in the Mahayana, in which he refuted Brahmanism in Hinayana. This marked the beginning of the spread of Mahayana Buddhism in India. Unquote. This is what Nitran Shonen writes. Now, the father of Mahayana Buddhism was Ashvigosha. Ashvigosha was a former Brahman leader. Not only was he a former Brahman leader, he was a philosopher in Hort, who is considered India's greatest poet before Kalidasa in the 5th century and the father of Sanskrit drama he popularized the style of Sanskrit poetry known as Kaya a brilliant orator Advigasha spoke at length on Mahayana and he had a uh, writing called the Greater Vehicle Buddhist Doctrine at the 4th Buddhist Council which he helped organize his fame lay largely in his ability to explain the intricate concepts of Mahayana Buddhism. Among the works attributed to him are the Mahayana, uh, that is, the awakening of faith in Mahayana, uh, the Buddha Karta, Life of the Buddha, in verse, and the Mahalakara, Book of Glory. Now, this is what black people and African Americans must understand. Ashvigosha organized the Second Fourth Buddhist Council. Let us talk about the First Buddhist Council. It was understood that it was impossible to retain the Buddhist teachings to memory. In 29 BC, they held the Fourth Buddhist Council in Sri Lanka and they put the Buddhist teachings and writings in a Buddhist language called Paskit or Pali. This religious writing is the largest religious writings in the world and is called the Pali Canon. The Tripatika is ten times larger than the Bible. The Tripatika is in a black language and it mentions black people in Africa called the Black Mia. It is inclusive of black history, culture, and language. Black or African Americans, let me give you a background history of Mahayana Buddhism. Please understand that Buddhist sects like the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Sho are not going to give black people a true historical explanation of Mahayana Buddhism. We explain to you that the father of Mahayana Buddhism was Ashvagosha. During the time of Ashvagosha, India was conquered by the Kushan king and he ruled and his name was Kanishka. It is written that Ashvagosha converted this powerful king to Buddhism. Together, you had Ash Vagasha and the powerful Kushan king and ruler of India named Kanakishka working together. It was King Kanishka who influenced the transition of the image of the Buddha from black to white. When you look at the Gahara art, they transformed the Buddha to Greek, Hindu, and a traditional white culture. This is called the Gahara art. 
And historically, you see these images of the Buddha looking like a Greek or looking like a white person. Now, the most important or historic transition that converted Buddhism from black to white was the what? It's called the Second Fourth Buddhist Council organized by King Kanishka and Bodhisattva at Vigasha. Now, historically and culturally, the Second and Fourth Buddhist Council was convened to make the Hindu language of Sanskrit the official language and trademark of Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism was the new Buddhist culture that educated all black history, culture, and language from Buddhism, and it was put in the new language that they call Sanskrit. The people of India spoke Praskit, not Sanskrit. Now, in the ghost show on reprimanding Hachiman, it reads, quote, Though Hinayana or lesser vehicle teachings differ from those of Mahayana or great vehicle, they are alike in both being the preachings of the Buddha. When the Buddha rejected Hinayana and replaced it with Mahayana, and when he in turn rejected the Mahayana and introduced his followers to the Lotus Sutra, he was rejecting different things. The Hinayana in one case and the Mahayana in the other. But his aim was the same in both cases, namely to lead the followers to the Lotus Sutra." Unquote. Nichiren writes in the Ghost Show, it's called the object of devotion for observing the mind. And it reads, quote, when one knows the Lotus Sutra, one understands the meaning of all worldly affairs. We can look at the Black Buddha statue at Toji Temple, at the ancient capital of Nara Japan, and recognize that because the statue is a Black Buddha, it is not from Mahayana Buddhism because Mahayana Buddhism educates all black culture, history, and language from Buddhism. When we look at the practices and teachings of the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, and many of the Japanese sects, and understand that their educating black culture, history, and language from Buddhism is not the teachings of the true Buddha or the Lotus Sutra, but it is only the teachings of Mahayana Buddhism which educate all black history and culture. Now, now you know, Ash Vigosho is the father of Mahayana Buddhism. Ash Vigosho introduced Buddhism to King Kanishka and what they did was they came up with their own Second for the Buddhist Council, where everything changed the language, the culture of Buddhism, and they changed the Buddha from black to white. You could see this by the Ganhara images because King Kanishka made Ganhara his uh, headquarters or his capital. Now, what happened was they came up with this new Buddhism and this new culture, and all of this happened because of. Sanskrit. Now, the largest writing in the history of humankind is the Buddhist writings of the Pali Canon. This is the first of the largest evidence of any religious writings in the history of mankind. The Pali Canon is about 14 times larger than the Bible, and if you take all of the writings of Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam, when you put all that together, the Pali Canon will still be three times as large as all of that put together. It's the largest religious work in the world, and it's called the Pali Canon. It comes from Pali, or Pasca. Now, the Vedics created a new language called Sanskrit. Now, listen to this. The 
first archaeological evidence of Sanskrit is called the Rudra Dainam. The Rudra Dainam came about in the AD. Now, this is how white people got an orgasm or how they went off. See, what they did was, in Syria, there was a document in Syria, and what they did was, they saw this document in Syria about 1500 BC, and it looked like, or it resembled Sanskrit. And so what they did was, they got together, and they appropriated this and called it Sanskrit, and it says the white language goes 1500 years, and when you talk, when you go into the 19th century, all of the white people, all of the white scholars got together, they converged on India, they converged on Sanskrit, and they used this. Now, the Mahayanas were the Brahmins. Now, the Mauryans, they were the black people. Now, how do we know about the Mauryans? Because King Ahsoka left edicts. He left edicts in writing in the language called Karasi. Karasi was a Paskit or a black language. Now, what is most urgent for black people to understand is how Sanskrit was used to extricate and to perpetuate racism. We created the Proud Black Buddhist World Association to reject the Sanskrit of Buddhist teachings. Please understand that whites and Europeans had conquered the world. They hated the idea and the Bible of Jews who were Semite that had black blood. Whites needed some evidence to prove white superiority. What excited white races so much and that gave them an organ orgasm was Sanskrit. The Hindus told a false history in their Vedas that Indo-Aryans conquered the black indigenous people of India and their light-skinned Brahmins who ruled India were ancestors to a superior white, white race called Aryans. Now, white people worldwide literally got a nut. The British dispatched Sir William Jones to India. People look up, I want you to look up, a free book. Now Google this, it's called the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. See, European scholars will let you know that there were not any white people in ancient India. See, the Indus Valley Civilization, they lived on the Sarivati River. And they lived on the Sarivati River and they created a city that was so complex. They had one in the water indoor toilets. They were one of the most sophisticated cultures and city planners in the history of mankind. In fact, it took white people, meaning Rome, 2,000 years to build a city that was comparable to the Indus Valley Civilization. From the Indus Valley Civilization came the Magadha Empire that was started by Sisu Naga. And the Magadha Empire is where the Buddha comes from. You see, at the time of the Buddha, there was no such language as Sanskrit. There is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, any kind of science that shows Sanskrit. You see, the most influential white scholar was German Max Muller, who translated the Rig Veda of the so-called Vedic text. It was the writers of Matt Muller that led white people to the Aryan invasion theory. White races in the 19th century used Sanskrit to advance the theory of white superiority. There were tablets etched in a language called Hurrian. Now, the documents refer to a treaty signed by the kings of Mitanni kingdom this is in Syria, that lasted about 200 years, around 1500 B.C. The words resemble Sanskrit and white races used this finding to promote white superiority. Their argument was that Sanskrit was the oldest and the most perfect language was of white origin brought to Syria and India by invading white people. Now, white people call this romancing. 
in the hood, we call this getting the nut. Now, white people literally got a nut on Sanskrit. The white man who got the biggest nut in Sanskrit was Adolf Hitler. You see, just Google Adolf Hitler in Sanskrit. Between 1938 and 1939, Hitler sent an expedition to India to collect Sanskrit manuscripts. Hitler was not only brought into the Hindu racist fraud, the racist Hindu convinced Hitler so strongly that Hitler declared himself as Lord of the Aryans and Brahmins in India, and, and, the, and, and the Brahmins in India declared Hitler the tenth incarnation or avatar of the Brahman God. Now, there you got it. Mahayana Buddhism, the plain erasure of black Buddhist history. I am Anthony F. Elmore. Learn more via visiting our website www.proudblackbuddhist.org Thank you very much.